coming up next, the story of the track that established the identity of one of the greatest bands ever. Uh, this song was designed to kick your butt. It's too early to say the swear word, you know what I mean. This song took them to the stadiums, it made them the kings of hard rock. I mean, if an alien came and asked me what rock and roll was, I'd just play him this song. But not before the lead singer had to change some of the risque lyrics to get it played at all. At the time, though, it didn't matter because it didn't chart, but it now has over a billion streams. And this classic is driven by a sound that came from the singer that was a happy accident. It was his reaction to the power going out and the band turned it into a chant. With a devastating dual guitar attack and a voice that sounds like the engine of a Ferrari, man, get ready to run for your life because the man is back in town. Coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember the first album, the very first one that you bought with your own money, but you don't remember the first track that you downloaded, then this channel is made just for you. Make sure to subscribe below right now to be a part of our Music History Daily straight from the artist. And, uh, you know, I don't think anybody remembers the first track they downloaded. How sad is that? Also, take a look at our exclusive content on Patreon. You can click on the link in the description. We have a lot of videos there that I think you're going to dig. Plus, you can become an honorary producer and help us uh, curate this content. And uh, you can also see our new merch at the link below. TNT, the song that uh, obliterated ACDC's feckless glam image forever. And when the dust of the transition settled, the identity of one of the most formidable bands of the rock and roll era was firmly entrenched. In September 1974, Malcolm and Angus Young promoted Bon Scott, a roadie, and chauffeur for the band that they founded in 73 to be the front man for ACDC. It marked the beginning of ACDC's hard-driving blues rock with the provocative lyrics, in-your-face vocals, pounding rhythm, and a double guitar attack designed to knock you out. <laughs> TNT would be one of the first ACDC songs you know, that featured Bon Scott unleashing his bluster on lead vocals. I mean, imagine that one day you're the chauffeur for an up and coming band and the next day you're the lead singer. But no one can deny the, the crack your skull vocal power of one Bon Scott. He had only been officially with the band for a couple of months, but he immediately took charge. Bon pushed his bandmates to uh, advance their songwriting, you know, to create rock anthems that would shake stadiums and the band wisely followed. There was a transformation of the musicianship and uh, showmanship of ACDC that paralleled the recording of TNT, the song and the album. And all of a sudden, Angus and Malcolm Young came out of their shells and they turned into these ferocious players. Their liberation was especially noticed by big brother George Young, who at that time produced the band's music with his former Easy Beats cohort, Harry Vanda. George marveled at what his brothers were doing on TNT, uh, the song and the album. It was as if their true talent had been locked up and Bond's emergence broke the chains to release them from their cages. Funny enough, Malcolm weighed a little more than 100 pounds and he stood only five feet two inches on his tippy toes, actually. Angus is also a pretty short dude, uh, maybe an inch taller than Malcolm, depending on the day. I mean, older brother George towered over his younger siblings at 5'11", which isn't really that tall, but you know, but what they lacked in physical size, they made up for in sonic power and onstage razzle dazzle that blew up speakers and eardrums alike. Malcolm, he was the anchor of ACDC's fiery new no-nonsense arrangement style. Because he was not a focal point of the group in the media, Malcolm often didn't get the, the recognition that he so richly deserved. Malcolm had a, a lightning fast left hand and he always kept his right hand moving. He was always you know, three or four steps ahead of everyone else in the group, never missing a note. His style was all his own, one that dazzled his peers and 
It had a powerful influence on new generations of musicians. When asked where he got his enviable rhythm, Malcolm claimed that he inherited the skill from his father, who never actually played an instrument. But he would tap dance and play the spoons to entertain Malcolm and his seven brothers. Angus gave Malcolm the credit for having the vision of what ACDC should be, which is really fitting considering the ACDC legacy started with Malcolm. His philosophy, the band will only play music worth playing, and that would be pure rock and roll delivered heavy and unabated. Both Angus and Malcolm had a strong, dedicated work ethic when they began a new project. It was hard to find their off button. High Voltage, ACDC's first album, that was only released in Australia, and it hinted at the band's potential. But TNT, that was a statement record. The group was making their transition from their debut single, Can I Sit Next to You, Girl, uh, that came out the year before TNT. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I sit next to you, girl? That song featured Dave Evans, the band's original lead vocalist, and Angus and Malcolm were alternating guitar roles. In addition to hiring Bon, the band hooked up with Phil Rudd as their drummer, and then Mark Evans on bass. Rudd would be a mainstay with ACDC, but uh, Evans was fired in 1977. For TNT, Malcolm, who passed away in 2017, he realized he should focus squarely on playing rhythm while Angus took over the lead guitar duties. Phil and Malcolm, they developed an intuitive flow for the rhythm section that was a definitive facet of the materializing ACDC sound, and the group progressed into a very tight unit. I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. The glasses I'm wearing right now, uh, when you get your eyewear at zenny.com, you're never going to have to deal with things like foggy lenses or glare with Zenny's advanced two-in-one anti-fog and anti-reflective coating. It's really amazing. You go to zenny.com, you can design your own pair today and add those features. Another dynamic that solidified the ACDC sound was uh, the way that they captured the intense energy of their live shows for the TNT album. The band used to hit the studio right after they finished up a gig. Still had that energy. Uh, that unusual practice resulted in ACDC producing a very raw, authentic vitality to their recordings, with Harry and George tightening up the songs to get them ready for mix downs. Malcolm and Angus developed a riff for TNT. Right. You know, the brothers had a very special bond. Uh, they preferred to sit down at a piano to work out their melodies, actually. Speaking of that, um, I was talking about this with a dear friend the other day, who's also a big music guy. You know, we were talking about the, the greatest guitarists of all time, what makes them unique, you know, their unique abilities. Uh, we're talking about Eddie Van Halen, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, Carlos Santana, Steve Vai, uh, Joe Satriani, many others. Um, and then we were talking about their creativity. And uh, from there we were, you know, talking about their greatest riffs. And it made me think about Angus and Malcolm. It's my opinion that these two brothers were the masters of the riff, catchy riff. ACDC has so many riffs that once you hear them, they're just permanently stamped on your brain. I'm not saying that they created the greatest riff ever. I mean, although you could make an argument for Highway to Hell or Back in Black. <laughs> But as far as quantity, I think they're at the top of the list for creating quantity, the quantity of the greatest riffs. The riff that they concocted for TNT was very bare bones. And you know, George hammered it into a cohesive structure that they could build on to finish the song. See me right into the sunset on your Once the band recorded the music track, uh, Bon arrived to compose the lyrics. Bond put himself in lockdown in the kitchen of Albert's studio in Sydney, and he came up with the, the snappy, you know, chest-pounding vernacular for TNT. Re-emerging from that recording studio kitchen, 
I mean, Bond came out just swinging, you know, with a brash chorus warning anyone that dares to oppose him. Because I'm TNT, I'm dynamite. Because I'm TNT, I'm dynamite. TNT, I'll win the fight. TNT, I'm a power load. TNT, watch me explode. Thinking about it, Bond uh, might also be the master of uh, double entendres. <laughs> Speaking of that, the first draft of uh, Bond's lyrics included a very risque opening verse, even more so than Bond's usual lewd connotations. George and Harry asked Bond to tone it down or they would never get radio airplay. So Bond complied and revised the first verse to see me right out of the sunset on your color TV screen. Out for all that I can get, if you know what I mean. I can get, if you know what I mean. Women to the left of me and women to the right. Left of me and women to the right. You know, TNT, it just instantly grabs us with Malcolm's driving groove and Angus's lead riff, paving the way for the Cockney command for attention. You know, oi, oi, oi. The OI intro was uh, Brother George's concept. Oi, 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 oi. Wonder if the battery guy got that from that. He had to. Have. Energizer lasts longer than any other battery. New Energizer. Oi. The light bulb went off when he heard Angus sing OI to himself. It gave uh, George the idea for the band to add the band chanting OI, OI, OI uh, at the beginning of TNT. And they just pelted the bridge with a series of oys after Angus's incredible guitar solo. I love that solo. TNT, oi, oi. Now, TNT was the third single from the album. Uh, the High Voltage was the lead. That rose to number 10 in Australia. High voltage, rock and roll. It was followed by It's a Long Way to the Top, and that went a notch higher to number 9. It's a long way to the top. And TNT peaked at number 19. Although TNT did not achieve the, the overall chart success of the first two singles, it is one of ACDC's most popular anthems, ultimately crushing its predecessors. It's actually become ACDC's fifth biggest song according to streaming numbers behind only uh, Back in Black, uh, Highway to Hell, uh, Thunderstruck, and uh, Shook Me All Night. It truly became a staple after the blockbuster success of Back in Black, when the world outside of Oz discovered all those great ACDC tracks that were recorded you know, in the Bon Scott era. When TNT reached number two on the Australian album chart, it was a sign of the indomitable destiny of ACDC. ACDC went on to sell more than 200 million albums uh, around the world, still selling like crazy. Though they were initially stymied by... Uh, commercial radio, and they didn't have any chart success in America until its fifth internationally issued album. The stalwart fan base for ACDC substantially grew with every single release, and even the death of Bon Scott and the, uh, Brian Johnson to replace him didn't stop them from achieving preeminence. In pop culture, TNT is featured in the comedic motion pictures that was in Napoleon Dynamite and Talladega Nights. Dynamite. <laughs> Along with some cool placements in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. On TV, Dodge trucks used TNT for their heavy advertising campaign in 2020. Uh, TNT has also been used uh, as a theme song for the incarnations of WWE wrestling matches and for NASCAR promos. Oh, the legal counsel for the Clear Channel radio chain, uh, now iHeartRadio, they issued an airplay ban of TNT after the terrorist attacks of 9-11. However, the ban was lifted a year later and the song remains one of the highest testing classic rock tracks across the United States. As you would expect, uh, there are many covers of TNT, like most of the ACDC catalog. One of the most notable is the salute to Bon Scott rendition by Anthrax. I'm dirty, mean, I'm mighty, unclean. I'm 
Brian Johnson carried the torch for Bon Scott after his untimely death in 1980, and Malcolm Young succumbed to his battle with dementia in 2017. Father Time is definitely catching up with ACDC. We wish they were immortal, uh, but Father Time always does. It'll be interesting to see what longtime comrades uh, Angus, Brian, and Phil will do from here. Over the years, the band marched on with the recruitment of Cliff Williams on bass and, of course, nephew Stevie Young on rhythm guitar to fill in for Uncle Malcolm. Like the Rolling Stones, the surviving members of ACDC are ageless when they go on stage. Or ageless when they're playing out of our devices or our turntables. A funny story about TNT, my 13-year-old son is a big ACDC fan. You know, I showed him Highway to Hell and he went down the rabbit hole from there. And he's a pretty shy kid. Um, he gets embarrassed rather easily. He won't sing along in the car or dance or jam or anything like that. So one day, a couple of months ago, I got home from being out somewhere and I walked into an empty house. I mean, my wife's car was gone, so I just figured that she must have taken the kids somewhere. So I'm sitting downstairs, relaxing in my chair, and I hear somebody singing to the top of their lungs upstairs. So yeah, I run upstairs and I can hear the noise coming from my teenage room. And I walk up to the door you know, and I'm listening in, and I hear this kid just taking it all the way to the cleaners, man. He's singing TNT, and I'll win the fight. TNT, I'm a power load. I mean, he's really going after the chorus. So you know, I open the door really slowly, and I find him, you know, he's got his earphones in with his back to the door, and he's just jamming. And he's going into Angus's solo with a wicked air guitar, but instead of a guitar, he was shredding with a, a Star Wars lightsaber. And then he goes into the oi, oi, oi part. And yeah, I couldn't believe it. So I gently closed the door, you know, so I wouldn't embarrass him. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> he came out of his shell. Later that night when I was saying goodnight to him, and we sat and talked for a bit. And I try to do that every single night with my kids. I talk about their day, their friends, music. He told me that TNT was his favorite ACDC song. And I just said, yeah, I figured that. He gave me this perplexed look and I just, you know, gave him a wink. <laughs> and then I realized that I just done what my own dad had done so many times with me before. He used to wink at me, and, you know, after he made a joke. And then my son asked me if, if I thought that ACDC was the greatest rock band ever. And I said, yeah, you know, they're up there for sure. I remember asking my dad the exact same thing. He'd always say the Beatles, but my dad, he likes some heavier bands. Unlike my friends' fathers who are listening to, you know, like symphony stuff, my dad liked Zeppelin and Sabbath and ACDC. And he said, well, I think ACDC is the greatest. My son said that. And I just gave him a hug and I shut out the lights and I closed the door and I just thought, there it is. Music being handed down to another generation. What you and then a few weeks after that, I heard him talking to a bunch of his friends. They were kind of hanging out in his room and they, they were discussing music. And they were throwing out bands like Imagine Dragons and 21 Pilots. And I remember my son said, yeah, ACDC could take them all. I was a pretty proud dad at that moment. The power of Angus and Malcolm, and whether fronted by Bon Scott or Brian Johnson, it's rock and roll dynamite. <laughs> Leave us a comment about the Brothers Young and Bon Scott below. What are your feelings on this legendary band and this song? What are your memories of, uh, of the album when they were breaking out? Tell us in the comments. If you like our content, do invite you to subscribe below. Hit the, click the button so you never miss out. And uh, check us out on Patreon. Also our merch. Help us keep the music alive. That's what we're here for. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk to you soon.